Welcome to Visions of Victory, our weekly broadcast of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Springhouse, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us where we remember the words of the Psalmist David. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So sit back and relax because the next voice you'll hear is that of our pastor, Charles W. Kwan. It's in the making. It's in the making. I would ask this morning that you would turn to the book of Genesis, the 32nd chapter, verses 24 and 25. The New Living Translation reads in this manner. This left Jacob all alone in the camp, and a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. When the man saw that he could not win the match, he touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of its socket. I want to share with you this morning from the subject, Wrestling with the Lord. In all probability, I will not finish this sermon. I'm going to ask if Reverend Tamika Moore would touch me gently to remind me that we have communion. But I want to challenge your theological thinking this morning. My God. I want to challenge you this morning to 
rid yourselves of some of the myths that we have that we cling to most of us have heard the saying we can't question God some of us take great delight in saying no matter how bad things are don't question him it makes us sound good on the other hand some of us wonder where God is when things are going upside down. I would even argue that there are times when we become angry with God. Now I know that that is something that you would not disclose. But if we're honest and things keep on getting worse, we do find ourselves getting angry. In fact, if you are anywhere near involved in hospice, some of the trends and thoughts that we go through is anger, denial, acceptance. Where is God when we need him? I would also question our ability to pray because I would maintain that you really can't pray with the kind of energy and commitment unless you're going through. Some of us have nice, neat, packaged prayers. We know how to pray publicly. We know how to do it at the dinner table. We know how to do it in a public meeting. We are versed in praying. It, it, it's something we do. We, we have a good memory. We have good uh, skills, oratorial skills, so we can say nice, neat, poetic words. But let things get Let things start to cave in on you. You forget about those nice, neat words. Just Lord have mercy. And there are some issues, as I said earlier, that are not black and white. How do you explain when you are trying to serve the Lord and your children are going to hell using drugs? How do you explain that when you try to do your best and you can't find work? How do you explain when sickness comes in your home and all of a sudden you're left without a loved one? How do you explain all of that? How do you explain when you can't pay your mortgage? Have you ever wrestled with God? Have you ever confronted God? Where are you when I need you? And perhaps you've been blessed that has not happened yet, but <laughs> never say what you won't do. In fact, I would also argue that sometimes we even critique people who praise God a certain way because we can't understand why they're doing what they're doing. But desperate people do desperate things. Some of us come and we are so uh, astute. And, and so intellectual, we know how to worship God quietly and reverently. We know how to put on our airs, and we know how to just to sit with proper posture, and we know how to look like we're praising God. Some of us have a down pat. We decided that we're not going to let anything mess up our mess cure. We decided that we're not going to let anybody know that we are crazy. So we're going to be conservative. We're going to be all in place. But... When the doctor says you got trouble in your home, yeah. the doctor says, I can't do anymore. All of a sudden, yeah. you forget about all of your. <laughs> I told you I can't finish this because over the summer, I've had so many people who I've had to try to minister to that I can't find words to even express what they're going through. Sometimes our words are meaningless. Pastor, I'm upset with God. What do you say when somebody says that to you? Don't be upset. You don't have enough faith. People want to be honest and vulnerable, and we cut them off. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. Because we have church language. wrestling with God. And God, I'm not going to let go till you bless me. I'm going to stay right here until I get a movement in my life. 
I'm going to stay right here till I see things change. I'm not going to let go. I know a change is coming. I'm going to stay right here till it comes. Some of us need a change in our lives. And let me say something else, my brothers and sisters, and, and I've discovered this in 27 years pastoring here, that too much is given, much is required. Do you know that people who have been strung out on drugs and people who have been on their way to hell and God turned them around, they come in with more passion than some of us do because they know where God brought them from. They know where they were headed. Can a mother ever pray for their child? Can <laughs> a parent ever pray for their child? Lord, I don't know what they're doing, but I'm going to keep on praying. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to stop. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Sometimes all you can do is just say, Lord, have mercy. Look at this story of Jacob. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. What's your name? He said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. The message of the Lord had a word for Jacob. He changed his name. God is awesome. When you wrestle with God, not only can he change your name, he can change your place. When you wrestle with God, he can change your destiny. When you wrestle with God, he can change your heart. You have to have consistency. Oh, God. You got to pray in season and out of season. Some things take a long time. You ever get tired of praying? Well, I, I hear some folks say, I've given up on my children. I've washed my hands with them. I can't do no more. I'm, I'm just exhausted. I'm finished. But God never gives up on us. And no matter where your children are, you got to keep on praying to God because God can do what you cannot do. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? He can do what you cannot do. I've even seen God change spouses. Oh, God, I wish I had a witness. Some hard-hearted spouse. Now, see, here again, you don't know that experience unless you had one. <laughs> You've been blessed with a good spouse. You don't know what it is to come home and catch hell after leaving church. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? I remember when I was at my first church, and this lady made me a cake. Yes, sir. Come on, come she on. caught heck when she got home. You made that preacher a cake? And didn't make me one? Nobody here, but <laughs> be surprised how folk get upset about what they give the church. You gave mutt. Oh, God, I... Don't you know there's folk who can't tell their spouse what they put in the plate? And Jacob needed a change. He needed a change of attitude. See, sometimes when we go before the Lord, we have to go before the Lord ourselves. We have to wrestle with God for ourselves before we can ask God to do something with somebody else. We have to come to front, front with God ourselves because our attitude might not be right. Our disposition may not be right. Jacob needed a name change. You know, I, I, you know names used to mean something. Now folk name it, so I don't know what their name is. But names, I mean, in the Bible, uh -huh. yes. names meant something. That's right. That's right. You know, in, in fact, um, I was asking someone uh, from, from Africa what the name meant, and he told me. 
named after his mother, named after somebody else. I would not want to be named after somebody who called me a trickster. Now, people ask me all the time, say, where did you get that name Quan from? They can't spell it. They say Quams. <laughs> so where'd your name come from? I don't know where it came from. Now, I was named after my father, but, but be honest with you, <laughs> I'm not so sure he gave me a good name. But in this case, Jacob's name meant trickster. And he lived up to his name. Be careful what you name folk because they live up to it. He bade dirty tricks on his brother. He lived up to his name. He cheated his brother out of his birthright. Be careful what you name your children. Guilt. And shame can weigh you down and cause you grief and despair. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, we need to wrestle with God to get rid of some of the stuff that we carry. Low self-esteem. I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. How many of us have lived a portion of our lives with low self-esteem? Can't move, can't function. And I would argue, my brothers and sisters, that whenever you find yourself in that situation, wrestle with God until he changes you and lets you know that you're a people, you're a person of purpose. Jacob finds himself all alone on one side of the river while his family's on the other side. Is there he wrestled with the message of the Lord. He wrestled all night long. Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, I, I marvel at people who can engage in all night prayer. You know, there's something about praying, you know, that, that you have to have a heart of discipline. And that's why also when you're going through, you know, you can do those quick prayers. But when you are really going through something. (sighs) In fact, I would even argue, my brothers and sisters, that even in church, you forget about the time when you're going through. You'll get that by 11 o'clock. See, because right now, some of you are sitting here looking good. Everything is going your way. You got a cookout to go to later on. If it doesn't rain, you got a few dollars in your bank. You got a reasonable portion of health and strength. Pastor, don't make the sermon too long. (laughs) Wait a minute, Pastor. Now, I could handle, you know, for a few minutes, but I got something to do. But it makes a difference when you know when you leave here, you got hell to face. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It makes a difference when you leave here, you know you got to go see the doctor. It makes a difference when you leave here, you know you don't have any money to put up food on the table. So you'll tarry a little while. Worship doesn't become a luxury. <laughs> it becomes a necessity. I was glad, glad, glad. See, I've lived long enough to have both. I worshiped at a time for luxury, just routine. I know I'm not alone. You might not call it luxury, but you may call it ritual, (laughs) whatever you call it. But, you know, I just came in and looked around, said, I'm here. Good music, good sermon. Bye. Bye. But I've been on the other side. When I came in, I wanted to stay. Had nothing else to do. I've left here 
Lord, where are you when I need you? Why me, Lord? Anybody say, why me? No, 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 not, not you. Anybody ever say, why me? And sometimes you have to even wrestle with the word. The word doesn't line up. I've never seen a righteous forsaken a seed going breaking my blade. Yet you're suffering. Sometimes we need to look at ourselves and examine our theology. Stop saying those nice, neat words. Because when people are hurting, they don't want to hear from you. It's going to be all right, child. You don't have enough faith. Trust God. That's how I feel sometimes, drained. My soul thirst. Anybody ever have a soul thirst? Where are you when I'm looking for you? some time for soul searching and I've had moments in my life when I've had to wrestle with God we had a board retreat I thought it was good and in the board retreat we were asked why we had passion for the why I didn't realize the question was going to be asked. And I'm not a person who does exercising, so I don't even know why I'm on the Y board. But as they went around the room, the question was asked, why are we here? And I began to talk about the journey in my life and how God had blessed me. But that journey required me to wrestle with God. And I discovered God more in my wrestling time than ever did before. I grew up in church. I served as a trustee 19 years old. I sang on the choir. You wouldn't believe that. I sang on the choir. <laughs> but there were some things that were void at that time because I didn't have those experiences. But when that experience came, I had to wrestle with God. God, where are you? When I need you, what are you doing? And I said to God, then I won't let go till you bless me. I'm going to hang on in there. And I look back now. He blessed me. Bless me. Bless me. Don't let go. So God blesses you. Change your name. Change your attitude. Change your heart. Change your mind. Change your walk. Change your talk. Don't let go till he blesses you. Don't let go. a way taking you there and so when you see his life house presented from the God God gave him a limp you might not see it but I got a limp <laughs> you, you might not see it in my walk but I got a limp you might not see it but every now and then I feel it I got a limp but I thank God I'm connected to the joint. And I would say to every believer, when you wrestle with God, you're going to come out with a limp because God wants you to tell somebody else what he did for you. Anybody know what I'm talking about? 
Anybody know what I'm talking about? Is God all right? Anybody got a limp this morning? Anybody got a limp? Anybody got a limp? Anybody got a limp? The limp reminds us about the power of God. So just in case you say, well, why does the pastor keep on telling this story? Because it's a limp. <laughs> and my limp helps me help somebody else who's limping. Ah, that God may get the glory. I need about five people who have experienced a limp in their life. Stand on the feet. There's about five folk who've experienced a limp of one kind or another. Just five folk. To God be the glory. Brandon? Just keep on wrestling with God. You may have a limp, but God will bless you. Dow Brown, Anita, keep on wrestling with God. Walt and Darling Logan, just keep on wrestling with God. All of those who are going through any kind of experience in life. Unemployed, finances low, sickness in the home. God will give you a new lease on life. If you just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. A change is going to come. Somebody right now. In the name of Jesus, won't you come now? Somebody right now. Somebody right now, won't you give God your life right now? Somebody right now, won't you come? Oh, my sister, won't you come and give your life to Christ? We hope you've been inspired and encouraged by today's message. You're invited to visit us at Bethlehem Baptist, a warm multicultural church with two Sunday services, 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. We're located in Springhouse, Pennsylvania at Penland Pike and Dager Road, only 15 minutes from Philadelphia. We hope to see you soon. God bless you, and remember, love God, serve people.